This photo is one of the only memories one woman has of her father before he was deployed overseas to fight Nazis during World War II. Second Lieutenant Eugene Chauvin didn't come home from the war, but his daughter, the little girl in that photo, never gave up hope on bringing him home. Well, Chauvin's plane was shot down over Belgium. Eric Johnson shows us Lieutenant Chauvin's journey back home to Spokane. Once he was young and alive, proud, strong, and as we came to find out, utterly fearless. Gene Chauvin graduated from Rogers High School in Spokane in 1938. When World War II happened, he joined the Army Air Corps. Look at him, look at that face. How could we lose with Gene Chauvin up there? He was married, her name was Phyllis, and together they set about building their lives. Baby Linda came along in 1941. There was a picture of all three of them. Gene looked like he could take on anything. Little Linda's eyes were bright. They still are 79 years later. I'm so grateful I have one little memory, and it was at about the time that picture was taken. So I have one memory of him holding me and his, his buttons and wings kind of hurting my chest. I remember that really well. The last time he was home in 1943, he said something that frightened Phyllis. He said he didn't think he'd be coming home again. Phyllis cried, and so he took it back. The next day, Gene Chauvin got on a train. Phyllis and Linda never saw him again. In 1944, three months after the invasion of Normandy, Allied troops were taking back Europe. Operation Market Garden was designed to liberate the Netherlands. Pathfinders were special troops that were flown in low and slow over Nazi territory and dropped half an hour ahead of full airborne invasions. The paratroopers used radar and lights to set up drop zones so the thousands who would follow would know where to land. Pathfinders needed the very best pilots, a duty so dangerous that they asked for volunteers. Gene Chauvin volunteered. He signed up for extremely hazardous duty. You had to be specially selected to become a Pathfinder pilot. His C-47 Dakota took heavy flak over Belgium. It was shot down September 17, 1944. Six paratroopers jumped out and survived. Five crew members and four paratroopers went down. Eight bodies were found on a farm in Belgium near the little town of Reitai. One body was missing, Jean Chauvin, the pilot. His wife, Phyllis, received this telegram not long after. The smudges on the bottom are from the tears she shed. And so Linda grew up without ever really knowing her father. There was always uh, that sense of, of loss. And I just wanted to know his temperament. And I have found out that he had a really hot temper <laughs> that somebody's <laughs> inherited. <laughs> but is, was quick to apologize. Everybody said that. And he had a great sense of humor, and he just always loved to fly. Are you proud? Oh, am I ever. <laughs> I certainly am. In 2001, she was compelled to visit Belgium. She went to the crash site and spoke to living eyewitnesses. In 2003, an organization called Central ID Lab Hawaii started digging. They found pieces of the plane, but after only two weeks, the excavation was shut down. So I put everything away. We cried. We couldn't believe it was suddenly stopped. Linda kept fighting and she got the case reopened in 2015. And in April of 2021, the Defense POW MIA Accounting Agency resumed digging. Op 17 september, it was big news in Belgium. Werd de Amerikaanse piloot Eugene Chauvin er door de lijn. For 70 days they dug in the rain, and Linda was there too, painstaking work in horrible conditions. Linda, why is it so important for you to track down his remains? 
I think I always thought they could be found for one thing and nobody had really looked hard enough. And uh, I just, I, I don't know, I was just driven to do it. In March of 2022, some remains were positively identified. They belonged to Second Lieutenant Gene Chauvin. On a summer day at Spokane International Airport, Linda was there waiting for her dad. A casket came down a conveyor belt. Linda and some people who love her watched as an honor guard carried it to a hearse. And a week later, on a warm day at Holy Cross Cemetery, a glistening C-47 Dakota flew over an extraordinary scene, the funeral for a man who'd been missing for 78 years. Military service members were there. Extended family was there. The farm where the plane crashed was owned by the family of Chris Noitz. She was there. Because uh, they give their life and they fight for our freedom, so they are heroes. Howie Mari Taragi was the lead analyst for both excavations. He was there too. Wow. I can't even imagine uh, how she feels. And Jean Chauvin was there, forever young. We Linda read a poem that her heartbroken mother wrote a lifetime ago. The boys are happily coming home on their lips a thankful prayer, remembering you and all of those who'd stayed behind to pay the fare. Shots were fired. The flag that had draped a hero's coffin was presented on bended knee. And a Spokane boy was home at last. She kept searching, pushing, fighting for 20 years. She was down in the mud digging with her hands for her dad, and she never stopped. And that warm day at Holy Cross Cemetery in Spokane, when he was finally put to rest, she said it was the best day of her life. So happy Second Lieutenant Chauvin is back home now. Just an incredible story, and it happens here.